morning, football fans, and welcome to 3 and Out, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct view for all that is sports. Well, here we are on Spreaker today. Yeah, that's right. Taking a slight little break from StreamYard because... Well, let's just say life has been busy. Explanation coming in a few minutes. Regardless, we have a crazy week to get into to recap week number nine in the NFL because it was pretty dang fun, wasn't it? We just saw the start of week 10 last night that I have so much to talk about. Uh, But last week was a doozy, wasn't it? I mean, the Steelers, I mean, I guess they're a for real kind of team somewhat. I don't know. The Titans... They just continue to fall apart, which, I mean, let's just say I think we all thought the same thing, unless you're a Die Hard's Titan fan, sorry. Uh, Next up, the Frankfurt game will start. Really cool game on Sunday, and the Chiefs have now won in four different countries. Pretty cool, right? I think it just proves that the Dolphins aren't there yet, but they're pretty close. The Chiefs, they're still the top dog, let's just be real. They're still the Chiefs, if you will, okay? The Ravens just completely outdid the Seahawks because the Seahawks just kind of, just kind they couldn't find that second gear. The Ravens, well, they had every gear, and boy, did they run that race well. The Browns absolutely destroy the Cardinals because, well, maybe the Browns are a little bit better than we thought. The Texans, I think they selected the right guy in the draft this year as the Buccaneers season looks like it might be done. The Saints, well, they're looking okay. And the Bears, I don't really know what to say about this team right now. There's there's so much to say, but i got to wait for our segment for that one. The Vikings, I think they might have a dude now. And the Falcons, well, they they need dudes. I, I, I don't get it. They played to this level with the Vikings, and they still find a way to lose. I don't know. The Packers smack around the Rams, even though the Packers quarterback isn't what everyone thought he might be. The Commanders take down the Patriots, as everyone has been taking down the down Patriots this year. Kind of tough go for them. The Raiders get a victory. Was it just two moves they needed to make to turn the season around? We'll talk about that. The Commanders, well, I right, talked about that, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> The Colts, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Colts over the Panthers. Eagles take down the Cowboys. The Bengals take it from the Bills. And boy, did those Chargers get down on Monday night beating those Jets. You are now tuning in live to 3 and Out right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct view for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 football fans. Well, here we are yet again. Hey, (laughs) Spreaker.com. It's always a joy, right, being on Spreaker. I love me some Spreaker. Uh, Reason being, guys, it's just, once again, really quick explanation before we get started with the show. Uh, Yeah, life has been kind of busy. Um, As you know, last couple of weeks, I haven't been live on StreamYard or for the show on 3 and Out whatsoever. Uh, Just a lot of things, you know, as you guys know, I'm a teacher, grades going in, this and that, getting everything, you know, students caught up, doing a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff in the in the work world, you know, so that's really been getting in. Of course, there's other things just career-wise, it's getting all kinds of stuff together, and of course, keeping IE Sports Radio together, I got to, you know, doing things now where doing a lot of team stuff and trying to build and just it's just sometimes it's not enough hours in a day and well like last week I had to fork over last week's show just because I wanted to get things done for the station because I know I wouldn't get it done any other time so kind of rough and then this week of course just another tough week (laughs) not tough but another busy busy week and well here I am ended up on a Friday because thank god uh we are off today of course before before I go any further to let me just always give a Warm salute and thank you to our troops, y'all. That's right. Veterans Day. We get today off, but it's because of these amazing people. These amazing warriors. The sailors, the soldiers, the airmen, the devil dogs. Everyone who has paid the ultimate price and who, of course, is serving now. We thank you. So very much, because you are the true bravery, the shield, the sword and shield of our country. And we thank you so much for keeping our stars and stripes healthy. We thank you. We love you. And we just want to say, today is Veterans Day. But every day, every day is a day we should thank our veterans and say thank you and uh, thank them for their service. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those 
one of those deals where we got to always do that. So I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be an American. I just want to say thank you so much, uh, all you veterans out there and anybody who has served. You're amazing. And enjoy your day because, once again, every day belongs to you guys. But today, hey, we recognize it. Get the day off, a lot of us. So thank you all very much for your service to our country. So with that, I got the day off today and was like, man, like I got a lot of stuff to still take care of, <laughs> but it's okay because I'm going to stop by. Couldn't quite get the stream yard thing going, I uh, guess, with all the busyness today, but I could get on Spreaker and well, here we go. <laughs> so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, big, big shout out as always to our sponsor, Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky, because it's freaking delicious. That's right. If you love you some beef jerky, you kind of want to head on over to planetjerky.net. Get you some jerky. If you don't know how to find planetjerky.net, which I'm sure you all do, head over to iceportradio.com. We have our little ticker thing now. You can take a look at it. It's really awesome. It is the second one. We always want to make sure we have the highlight, the big highlight of the week or whatever there first then we're gonna have the second one is always gonna be our sponsor or sponsors like planet jerky delicious go check them out always always great stuff there ice sports radio in jerky i mean it just goes y'all ice sports radio jerky and football in all sports it goes so grab yourself some premium brisket beef jerky from planet always good stuff there and please show them love because they help us out a lot here at ice sports radio keeping the lights on and you know helping us out so <laughs> we appreciate you all thank you all so very much and without further ado let's get into the show big ups to our chat by the way miss angela winstead what's going on i She's probably going to hate me later because I got some things to say about the Cardinals. But, hey, um, <laughs> it's just I'm just, see, you know, saying how things are at the moment. But let's see how those Cardinals do. Uh, I mean, you know, once again, I, pff, I'm i a Raider fan, guys. So I kind of feel like no one can make fun of me because <laughs> it's just <laughs> I make fun of the Raiders worse than anybody. It's hilarious. But anyway, well, have they turned a new leaf? We shall see. Let's talk about this last past week. Okay, I know we got a week 10 game, which happened last night to talk about, and we'll get to it. But here we go. One hour of football starts now. Let's have some fun. Also, big ups to Gen B in the chat room. Let's get it, y'all. Oh, man. We just uh, we got so much to cover, man. And Oh, wait. And how I dare forget, as I always say, big up to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For without him, nothing is possible. So that's right. That's right, and without all of you guys out there, IE Sports Radio is not possible, so we appreciate you all, and thank you all so much. Okay, gotta always say that, y'all, because it's the truth, you know? So, all right, let's get to it. So, uh, Thursday, last Thursday. Let's just call it what it is, guys. The Steelers have a football team, but it's, like, just a football team. That's it. I, I have no other way to explain the Steelers. I, I really don't. They they have a team that's capable but they're just they're they're kind of far from being I think even a playoff caliber like a I mean they might get in like on some kind of fluke <laughs> I don't know but what I am saying is they are going in the right direction and and that's what you want right you just you just had your star quarterback for so many years right retire I mean that dude he got drafted when I was in high school man that was a long time ago <laughs> so I mean was it 04 around there so yeah I was like a sophomore I think so I'm just saying, you know, Big Ben, hey, he's he's out doing his thing now, you know, uh, and that's great, retired, but now they're still trying, the Steelers are trying to find their footing now, and you know what, good for them on just making things work the best that they can, but they're just not there, I mean, let's just be real, the Titans are a dumpster fire, man, I, I, I'm i so sorry, I feel like I bass the Titans so much on here, but they're just that team that I expected so much from years ago. And every year I come back in with that same hope. It's like, I feel like I'm a fan of theirs in a weird way because I do expect a lot. I'm, I told, as I always say, I'm a big Vrabel fan. Um, you know, so I just, I just feel like I just want this team to do good. And when they don't do good, I'm like, gosh, dang it, man. And it's just, there's nothing there, guys. There's nothing. I still think D Hop went to the wrong team. I get it. Everyone's like, well, what do you mean? Uh, Matt Jones is horrible. Yeah, Matt Jones ain't that good. I get it, but. Gosh dang it, man! Somehow he could have worked with Bill. I mean, I, I, so I think the Patriots would be way better right now with him. So I don't know. Um, even just the leadership. But I will tell you right now, the Titans are just falling apart. The seams. I, I don't really have much more to say about that. There's just not a lot to work with. I mean, now they got Levis behind center. I mean, not no diss on him, but I don't know if he's the answer. 
Steelers ended up winning the game 20 to 16 last Thursday night. Steelers jumped to five and three. Titans will fall to three and five. Kenny Pickett's just doing his thing, you know. He's he's he looks like a middle of the road guy, and they're playing like a middle of the road team. That that that's really all I can say, right? Uh, just, just nothing more there. I feel like right now this team is just they're just kind of there, you know. They're there. They're a team that's gonna you know give their fans some games to cheer about in the regular season. They're going to play the regular season, but then when it comes to the postseason, we'll see be like, oh yeah, who are the Steelers again? You know what I mean? Like this is one of those things. You know, they're not they're not too relevant right now. So get mad, but I guess I just feel like the Steelers are you know they're much better than a lot of teams. But I'm just saying there's a lot of teams like that right now, right? But they're not a team that I'm going to sit here and be like, oh yeah, it's a major playoff team or a team I think is going to really surprise some people. They may I don't know. But the Titans are definitely not one of those for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, it just there's just nothing there. So. Okay, moving on to Sunday's games. Okay, this was just, wow. We look at the Frankfurt games, okay? We know we got another one this week, but the Chiefs, what the crap, man? Like, I don't know. The Chiefs are a weird team. They have two losses on the record this year that I, look, and I'm and as a Raider fan, I just, uh, I, I, I hate them, but at the same exact time, you got to give credit where credit's due. That Lions game was a great game, but the Lions are looking more and more human every week. I don't know. I, we were very high on them for a while. I, I think they're still good, but the Chiefs probably should have won that game. I don't know. And then we look at their second loss of the year, and uh, they lost to the gosh dang Broncos. I mean, you know, that was just kind of a what the hell kind of thing. I don't know what happened there. It was a absolutely pitiful loss, but they, they, they chewed it. They swallowed it. They're on to the next. I get it. And then they came back and beat a good Dolphins team. But it just, it just surprises me though, that that would even happen. But it's the NFL, right? We see crazy things that this happen all the time. So overall, I, I don't want to say that the Dolphins are a team that doesn't have it because they definitely do. But I feel like that was the game. You want to prove something? Here it is. And they got 60 minutes they got 60 minutes to fight this Chiefs team, and they came up short. Does that mean that the Miami Dolphins are not going to the playoffs? No. Does it mean the Miami Dolphins can't go to the Super Bowl? No. It just means that right now, with how things are, with how everything looks, nobody can sit here and say that the Miami Dolphins are the best team in the league, of course, or in the AFC. But they're definitely a strong team, and we're going to see them in the postseason for sure. As for the Chiefs, they just keep doing their thing, man. Mahomes, I mean, I, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. From what I heard, he was sick this week. I've been here all kinds of crap. But as of right now, I just feel like the, the, I don't know, the Chiefs have this, they have this thing. They have this thing about them where they can turn it on in any game and make it happen. So I get it. There was a lot of crap that happened this year. Uh, with well, sorry, that happened in this game. It was crazy. End of the fumble. We all, you know, that was just kind of crazy to talk about. Uh, major, major, major player in that game with the uh, that fumble recovery that we can talk about forever. But I'm just not going to spend time on that. Regardless, they won and they did good and they played well. And you know what? Even if Mahomes didn't have the best game, he threw for not very many yards, whatever. When it comes down to it, guys, they still got it done. They're still a damn good football team, and they're still to be feared. So, I mean, taking a look at it, I mean, yeah, Mahomes threw for two TDs and 185 yards, okay? But he went 20 for 30. He completed more passes than he didn't, okay? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, you get what I'm saying, okay? I mean, what I'm saying is the percentage is good, all right? And, and, and they didn't have the best game. Talk about Loa, I think, really kind of had a – Somewhat of a better, nah, maybe not, no, not really, no. They, they were kind of the same, actually. So, regardless, this was just one of those good games. It was a good football game, right? And that's really it. The Chiefs played like they should have, especially against the damn Broncos, but whatever. And the Dolphins get killed short in a game that they played somebody that they met, them, they met their match, and they just lost by a touchdown. Guys, we can see this game again in the playoffs, and I'm so excited about it. Good evening, or good evening, good morning, Bernie Bango, uh, a fellow teacher here, by the way, IE Sports Radio. Bernie Bango, the host of our uh, Wisconsin sports show here. Big Cheek Sports, Sunday mornings, y'all. It's the cheesiest show around. You're going to want to check it out. Also, uh, as we so spoke about Jen B earlier, she's the host of the Show of the Land podcast. Always a great show there, talking all things Browns and all things Cleveland and Columbus sports in Ohio. So always great stuff there. Bernie says, Dolphins AFC runner, 
Dolphins AFC runner-ups this year, in my opinion. No, 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 I completely agree. They, they had their chance to prove it, and they just couldn't get it done. And he got 60 minutes, and he got 60 fair minutes, right? So, yeah, they had their chance. They didn't do it. Okay, they're the runner-up. I agree, unless they can change it. But Bernie also says, Chiefs going to put it all together, come playoffs, flip the switch. And I could not agree more. This team is strong. They got so much going for them, guys. There's so many great, great players on this team. The injury bug hasn't really hit them so hard. I mean, you know, granite here and there, yes. But when it comes down to it, the Chiefs look good. So, okay. That was last week starting things off early morning uh, in, uh, well, if you're, if you're on the West Coast, early morning. But the Frankfurt game, of course, game over there in Europe. Awesome stuff. We're going to see some more coming up. All right. Next up, the Ravens and the Seahawks. Okay, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time on this one because it, I think this is very self. It's just kind of there. The Seahawks just didn't have it. Let's just let's just call it that. The Seahawks didn't have it. They they couldn't stop this offense for crap. There was nothing there. They couldn't get anything going on offense. It looked like a JV team trying to play a junior college man. They, they just looked like they were like scared. Like this was it just wasn't there. Deer in the headlights. Anytime they got on the field, it just didn't look like it was there at all. And then we see this Ravens team who still, they have major injuries, man. I mean, J.K. Dobbins, man, that hurt so bad losing him, right? But look at these guys. They're still playing. They're playing so freaking good, man. Lamar Jackson out of his freaking mind. What I love the most about this team is that you have this defense they are not one of those crazy historic defenses that the Ravens usually have. But damn it, they're close. They're close, and they have some major players, and they could be one of those teams. They could be one of those defenses and merge into that. And if they keep on winning like this and playing well. Uh, Bernie Bangle in the chat room says, Lamar Jackson for MVP. I think so, sir. I think so. I think so. I like this guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can get excited here. We can get real excited. Hey, we for him, man, we can even throw a yeehaw in there. Yeah, because he's playing right now like that. Man, homeboy is getting it. You know what? Good for him. Good for him. Man. He's been written off by so many people, man. I get it. There's people I don't want to mention on ESPN and all that. I don't, I don't really watch any of those nonsense shows, but I see clips here and there on YouTube, whatever. And people write this dude off, man. People write the, and what has he done? He's winning. <laughs> it's seven and two, dude. What do you say to that? He's winning. What the hell's your problem? Stop saying this dude ain't worth. I, I, okay, I'm not going to get into that. But what I will say is that the Seahawks just didn't have it. They weren't there. And the Seahawks look like a team that just, kind of fell apart they did they just they just fell apart in this game and there's no nothing to be ashamed of man they lost to a damn good football team i'm a little bummed out that geno smith couldn't couldn't show out better in this i mean he's been in the league for a good while now um it's just i don't know there's just yeah it's it's kind of tough man it's hard to pinpoint what really happened in this game for them but they just didn't they didn't have it and i'll tell you right now man that kid mitchell He's looking good right now for for the Ravens, so good for them, good for them, and, and the yeah Seahawks is on to next week. But boy, this team ah they just didn't have it, man. Thirty seven to three, freaking Ravens, man. They done stomped out the Seahawks at home. What a game for those guys. And uh, there we go. All right, yeah. In the chat room here, big ups to Gen B. She says the Ravens are scary for teams who aren't familiar with them for sure, and they are. This is why I love seeing like those AFC North teams because they're familiar with each other and they freaking battle, man. But yeah, the Seahawks don't see these guys very much. And boy, it was a bird battle, but a one freaking sided bird battle. <laughs> okay. And yes, Angela Winstead. She said, hell yeah, that's a pirate for you. Love me some deuces. <laughs> Kenton Mitchell. He was, of course, a ESU pirate. Angela Winstead, of course, a big fan of, of ESU. ECU. The ECU Pirates. And yeah, Keaton is a beast, man. This guy is so I, I like him. He played well. I, I I think I think 
yes, this this is the dude they should be sticking with, man, because this dude's gonna he's gonna ball out, and I love it. I love what he gave in this game. I, I, I was I was enjoy- I had all the other games on, but I was enjoying his performance the most, man. He plays football the way football should be played. That old school. I'm just gonna I don't care what's gonna happen. I'm getting to the end zone. That's all there is to it. I love it. So uh, big up to our boy Taron Rodriguez in the chat room, by the way. Also, the host of Set Point here, a volleyball show. The Soul Cast Spring Sports Show here also. on uh, and today, Pretty cool. <laughs> He's actually going live today, too. So, big ups to our boy, Taryn. Uh, so, yeah, man. So much, man. We just, ah, we have ourselves a a uh, really crazy, crazy. Actually, sorry. He, uh... <laughs> Taryn, he, he's, he's all over the place with the schedule, man. So, but yeah, make sure to catch the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, of course, every week, whenever he has it. Great dude. He'll be on today at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Eastern. So catch him on there. He'll be talking plenty about these games. But yeah, what's up to you, Taryn, in the chat room, man? We'll be getting to your teams in just a bit in SoCal. But yeah, so okay, um, I'm just gonna you know put this out there really, really, really fast. I-, I love to make these quick hits sometimes, but guys, what in the crap, man? Like we talk about these Browns, and the Browns, by the way, absolutely just did away with the Cardinals this week. I, I, I don't really know. I don't really understand. I don't really, really, really get why the Cardinals couldn't score a damn point i i feel like they were there they they made some good they they had some decent drives it's just take the damn points man i look <laughs> when it comes to the cardinals man sometimes i just scratch my head it's it, it, the cardinals the raiders the, the giants uh historically the jets I mean, there's just some teams where i'm like what are you doing like golly man like who's calling these plays <laughs> like I, just, I don't know sometimes i get genuinely concerned man is it like a hotline they can call to get help like i, I don't know guys like i just i want to know what i don't know I, yeah uh, <laughs> angel says here in the chat room because we had looney tune behind center <laughs> All right, well, yeah, um, Looney Tune. <laughs> it's kind of funny because, well, that's his name. <laughs> Clayton Tune, which, of course, out of Houston, and, and Angela's clearly not a fan. But, yeah, uh, look, guys. Okay. Let me settle down. <laughs> but when I look at this game, I think of a couple of things. I think of... Can the freaking Cardinals get somebody behind center and keep them there? I mean, somehow, some way. I know the injury bug has been very cruel. I get it. But, man, can the Cardinals just get a break? That's the first thing I think about. All right. Okay. Then I see a defense that looks like they don't want to be there. Like, is that is that mean to say or is that bad? I just... I just feel like there's there's not a lot. There's not a lot of, like, <laughs> it's like, I feel like this last past week, I feel like they were on Friday mode trying to go home. Like, that's what I thought. That's, that's what I saw. They're like, man, come on, man. It's the second quarter. Like, oh, hurry up. I got to get home, man. Uh, we got, you know, another episode of this on uh, we got we, I got to finish the episode of of whatever it's called on on, on Netflix tonight <laughs> like you know like I kind of feel like they had other places to be like I guess I guess ah like it didn't look like they wanted to play the game like it's like dude if you guys didn't want to if you guys don't want to be there man you should have just called off <laughs> I don't know but but that's no that is no uh shade on the Browns man cuz the Browns well they were like, hey, if you guys want to give us this, we will gladly take it. And we'll win pretty good, too. Watch. I mean, that's really it. It, it really was. So the Browns have just a, a, a very, very strong team. Um, I, I love what these guys have. I, I, I think that there's so much there right now. And they are a strong, strong, strong football team. But I just don't know if I can call this team a strong playoff team yet. I guess I just don't see it at the moment. 
it's kind of rough. And don't get me wrong, I got I got love for the for the Browns, man. I, I, there are some good players on here. I I'm a fan of PJ Walker because well, I've ever seen him in the XFL and, and and the dude played, man. I liked him, you know. I I've always been a fan of Joku, even from Miami. Uh, I mean, I can look at guys like hey, we people deserve second chances, right? Good redemption for for Deshaun Watson. I'm a Miles Garrett's a gosh damn monster. I've always loved his type of play. Taki Taki, uh, fun fact here, guys. I work at Heritage High School, and that is actually where Taki Taki went to high school at. Of course, this was way before I worked there, about man, yeah, about ten years. But he was a Patriot. He played for Heritage High School uh, in Menifee, California. So. You know, I, I think that's awesome. You know, you go in the weight room, you see he's got a, you know, a couple guys who made it up there to D1s. Um, he, he's up there, you know, with his BYU picture. And, you know, and I like to follow him. I know he's from this area, and he he's he's a very, very good player. You know what I mean? So a lot of these guys are, though. All these guys are just monstrous. Uh, they They have a good team. They really do. I love what they got. I love what the Browns have. It's just I don't know if they're good enough to be a playoff team, like a strong playoff team right now. I I, I want to see more out of them. Of course, they they beat down the Cardinals, but that's like beating the Raiders. It's like oh okay, like okay, you know what I mean? Like I guess <laughs> it's it's just the Cardinals, you know. But look, they're five and three. They're five and three. Okay, the Cardinals are one and eight. The season is they, it's safe to say, man. I hope, I hope, man. I really do. I. Man, <laughs> look, everyone talks about tanking, you know, and I get it right now. I just feel like, you know, everyone's doing the whole sweepstakes thing as per usual. Or Caleb Williams, sweepstakes, whatever. I really hope, man. I don't know. Uh, let's go back to the chat room here. Angela says that uh, I don't even think we got past the 50-yard line or maybe once or twice in 60 minutes. <laughs> eye roll. Insert eye roll. Uh, yeah, some talky talky talk in the, <laughs> in the chat here. Um, yeah, Angela says, does anyone on the Cardinals want to be there? I kind of feel like that's not, the, I mean, I, right? I mean, it's the truth. She also says that Kyler should be back this week and hopefully James Conner. And boy, man, I hope that they are because this team just doesn't have it. And uh, yeah, Gen B shouts out Miles Garrett, Dalvin Tomlinson, etc. All up in their business. And they got, they, they, like I'm saying, I'm not going to slight the Browns. I'm not. They 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 came, they saw, and boy did they conquer. And the the Cardinals basically just gave the game away. Like, yeah, we don't we don't want this. You guys can you guys can have this. Like it's like opening the door for somebody and then waiting for them. Have you ever done that before? That's that was exactly what this game was. I feel like the Cardinals were like maybe a good hundred yards in front of somebody else who was walking towards a door in the mall, and they were like just waiting and staring at them, like, I'm holding this door for you. It's okay. You can take your time. It's okay. Don't don't run. It's okay. I'm gonna hold the door for you. And then when they finally get there, they're like, "Have a great day." <laughs> and then that was it. like, I mean, guys, like, it's just there was nothing there. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I watched that game and it was just, it was like, I don't know, man. I just, I guess I don't know, but it was rough. It was rough. I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand what the hell's going on with the Cardinals. I, I want to see them win so bad. I listen to I listen to all the shows, of course, every week. But I listen to uh, our boy, man, Mr. Kiernan Daly on Wednesday night. And he talked about, like, because unfortunately the Diamondbacks just lost to the Rangers. So good for him. I mean, good for Drewski, bad for Kiernan. But he, talks about, he talked about the most painful Arizona losses, right? Like in a title of all time, and you know he brought up, of course, the 2009 Cardinals, and that was on my birthday, guys. That was on my birthday. That was February 1st, 2009. I was 20, <laughs> and I was cheering so hard because, of course, you know I'm not a Steelers fan, I'm a Raider guy, so it's always against the Steelers, no matter what, who they play. I was cheering so hard for those guys, man. I was. I want that Fitzgerald touchdown, the last freaking what, like couple of minutes, and then of course the. The famous Antonio Holmes catch from Ben Roethlisberger. All I know is, ah, it sucks. And now, here the Cardinals are again, just looking bad. And it's, ah, it sucks. So, anyway. Um, but, all right. So, really quick, guys. We're going to, I know. And I said I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on this game. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I I don't I don't know. It's it's the chat room's going crazy. Angel's spitting water all over her computer. I, I so I guess I made a funny there. Sorry, Bernie's is uh, yeah body built by Taco Bell because Darren brought that up from Taki Taki saying that which is pretty funny on Saturday Night Live. The the uh, parody says Sioni uh, Taki Taki. Body Built by Frito-Lay, parody of Matthew Gidon's, yeah, the famous, the intro that Taryn likes to bring up a lot, the Saturday Night Football intro against the Ravens, you know, Body by Taco Bell, so, yeah, um, I just, I don't know, but, okay, regardless, moving on, the Browns just went ahead and destroyed the Cardinals at home, I, I guess, yeah, that was it, 27-0, Cardinals just didn't look like they wanted to be there, the Browns totally embraced it and said, we'll take the victory, okay, The Texans. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, is it safe to say that the Texans actually did something right in the last couple of years? I mean, you know, hint, hint, this last past year. Okay, look, I, I, and Taryn is in the chat right now. I know he's going to work, so peace out, brother. Good, thanks for tuning in for a little bit. But, but guys, I, okay, I have been a fan of Bryce Young for years. Okay, Taryn and I have been doing three and out college edition, which we're doing tomorrow morning. Tune in. Uh, but we have been doing this show for a long time, and we have been doing this show since Bryce Young was in high school. Okay, back at Modern Day, and we cover, of course, everything. I call you know high school and college football the best that we can, and I've always been a fan of this guy, and I, I just it hurts to see him struggling right now, and I don't want to say that. Somebody made the wrong pick because I do feel that the car, that the Carolina Panthers still made a damn good choice that they just got to give him another year. If he, if he's bad, then then whatever. But they also got to build around him because the Cardinals don't have anything. Okay, but but the Texans, man, the Texans, yeah. C.J. Stroud is the dude. That's it. <laughs> I know, I know, Miss Jen B is in the chat over here right now, getting ready to shout out her Buckeyes. Oh, H! Let's see if she finishes that for me. <laughs> but, yeah, these guys, or this guy right here, he, he plays good football. He plays good football, and boy, is he getting it. He's out there doing his thing, playing great, and damn it, he looks good. He went 40 for four, 30 for 42. 470 yards with five touchdowns. I mean, golly, man. <laughs> this dude right here, yeah. And Brown, by the way, man, like, man, Noah Brown out of out of OSU. He he looks good, man. Another, another Ohio State guy. <clears throat> this is awesome. I love this. I love what he's got going on here. He's he's a couple years older, you know. He, of course, he went before before uh, Stroud was there, but he was his number one receiver this week, man. Six receptions for 153 yards, one touchdown. I, I just I know a hundred times over that CJ Stroud was the guy, and, and yeah, in the chat room here, oh, they're just going they're just going all over the place right now. But yeah, Bernie Bango says that Stroud is the first Buckeye to look good. Yeah, first quarterback, yeah, first quarterback Buckeye. To look good uh, in the NFL, and he really is. I, I, I just I feel like he's the guy, and he's he's playing so well. Uh, oh, Jen's in the chat. Oh, H I O. Yeah, you gotta you gotta love it, man. It feels like the shoe right now. We're in the shoe. Just kidding, but um, but no, it's it, it's just a, a a wonderful thing to see this guy, this young man, go out there and just play well. He's playing good football. He's leading this team, and damn it, they're four and four. Did we expect the Texans to be four and four right now? Look, I get it. They're four and four, but this is the happiest four and four I think this team has been in a long time, all right? If they've ever been happy at four and four. So, I mean, let's just call it what it is. They, they did their thing. They made the right choice and they, they're just looking better. I love it. D'Amico Ryan's making this team look better. This team is going in a good direction. Good for the Texans, man. They look strong. As for the freaking Buccaneers, look, the wheels fell off. Okay, we get it. We get it. We we get it. It's it's it's. We can't beat a dead horse. Everyone's gonna say, "Oh, Baker sucks," and whatever, whatever. Okay, maybe Baker isn't the best damn quarterback out there, but the rest of the team sure as hell ain't doing anything else to help. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, they. It's like. It's like they're in games. The Buccaneers are in games, okay? 
if you look at their schedule this year, they're in games. They, they've they only gotten, like, smacked around, like, well, they, there was a good little stretch. Look at their schedule. Okay, the Eagles, 25-11. to to 11, The, uh, and, the, okay, and the Lions, 20-6. to 6, Okay, those are the only games where they really kind of got, like, jacked up. But other than that, guys, they've been in every game. They've only lost by, like, single digits. This is a decent football team like just they're just the ball isn't bouncing their way that's it that's what's going on right now they just they're there but they don't have enough to beat the other teams so that are there too that's it they're 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 the they're the dude who's you know who works out with his buddies who's like 10 to 15 pounds weaker on every lift he's not that far and he's good but he's just not he's not there yet you know what i mean like what do i what do i say you know um, Bernie Bango in the chat room says here, who is going to win the NFC South? Oh boy. <laughs> well, and I love how he says Bucks, Bucks, Saints, Falcons, because well, the car, the Carolina Panthers sure as hell ain't winning, but yeah, right now we're going to look at the standings in a little bit too, but yeah, in the South we have, I mean, look at that man. Saints at five and four, Falcons at four and five and the Bucks at three and five. I mean, it's really anyone's game right now. I'm cheering for the Saints because of Derek Carr, um, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like they're going to end up winning by a hair. None of them are going to be relevant in the playoffs. Whoever goes, the Buccaneers might get a late surge, but the Falcons. I just I don't want to be mean to anybody out there, but I don't feel the Falcons. I feel like the Falcons are just kind of they're they're not that great right now, and they're just probably going to be like that the rest of the season. I don't think they're going to find that other gear. So that's just where it is. But but in this game, man, CJ Stroud. Once again, 30 for 42, 470 yards, man. How about that? And five touchdowns. Yeehaw. That's right, y'all. This dude got it. This dude brought some freaking thunder. I love it. I love what he's bringing to the table. This team looks good. Good for the Texans. Hell of a victory. I love this. So, anyway, guys, we got to you know, actually let's get through one more game. We'll take a quick break, but... Okay, so next up, one more team before we get to the or one more game before we get to the break. We have the Saints and the Bears. Okay, let's just be real. Let's just be real here. The Saints are a team that have pieces, but they're five and four. And once again, as I just said, I think they're going to win the NFC South, but they're not going to be very relevant at all. They're going to be one and done, and they just don't really have too much. There's just there's just nothing to be excited about right now. Saints fans, you should you should be low key excited. Um, just because, well, who knows what the future should bring and you guys are on a bad team and frick, you're leading the dang uh, division right now, which is always a nice thing, right? But at the same exact time, they, you, you guys need more, you know, and as much as I love Derek Carr, I still don't know if he's the answer. Uh, you know, I know that I've seen a lot of Saints fans getting really angry with him and I'm thinking to myself, ah, it's the same damn thing he did with the Raiders. He's still making those little dumb mistakes, but... When it comes down to it, the Saints right now look like a like an okay team. They do. They look okay. And okay is not going to get them very far, but it's it's going to get them wins versus teams, especially like the Bears. Okay, so, I mean, Taysom Hill continues to do his thing, and and it's just, I don't know. I love it. I love, I love what they got going on. But regardless, as for the Bears, uh, look, they won last night. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But but realistically, man, I mean the Bears just don't. I don't know. There's there's few guys in that team where I can go and I get they made a trade and now they have Montez Sweat, which is a big big. I think a reason a big reason why they won last night. But you got other guys. You know you got Komet, who I think is going to be their savior. Uh, back I don't want to butcher this guy's name, but the quarterback out of Shepherd Division Two, awesome. Love seeing guys from smaller schools prevail, like Ali Marpet with the uh, with the well, former. Buccaneer or Cecil Shorts out of Mount Union, Purple Raiders. Jen knows about them in the chat. You know, I love seeing those guys. But uh, Bagnet or Bajent, Bajent is his name. Um, he threw three picks in this game. It just didn't look good. He still threw for 220 yards, but 
Yeah, I mean, Derek Carr threw for 211, but two, threw two touchdowns. Those are the throws that matter, you know? And yeah, 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 in the, in the chat room, Bernie Mango, Taysom Hill is just fun to watch. <laughs> he's a true baller, and he is, man. Taysom Hill's that guy. He's big, he's strong, he, he's got a, a heart that's just, he's got that motor that never stops. The dude is a monster, man. I love, I love the kind of football he plays. The dude is a damn beast, and good for him for playing so well, right? So, anyway... Uh, with that said, the the Browns, the Browns, the Bears will drop this one, twenty four to seventeen, going two and seven, and well, the Saints win this one thing, uh, win this game here, twenty four seventeen. I know I just repeated that. My apologies, but Saints win twenty four seventeen. Saints now jump to five and four. The Bears at the time dropped two and seven, and well, that's really all she wrote. The Saints look. Okay, but I don't think they're okay enough. Anyway, we got like six more games to cover, seven, eight actually, to cover, and then we're going to get to this week's picks. You were listening to 3 and Out right here on Ice Sports Radio with me, your boy Larry B. Oh, we're going to have some fun coming up in the second half of the show. Be ready, y'all. <laughs> Once again, listening to 3 and Out right here on Ice Sports Radio, your direct for all. That is sports. We'll be right back with more NFL action of Week 9 after this. What's up, sports fans? You're listening to IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your favorite West Coast Wisconsinite, Bernie Bango. And if you're a cheesehead, come listen to my show, Big Cheese Sports, where we road trip around America's Dairyland, previewing, reviewing, predicting, debating, and digging into all that is Wisconsin sports at the college and pro levels. Join me on IE Sports Radio. Sundays at 1 p.m. Central Standard. Bernie out. Sports fans, do you like teams that are tough, cities that are tougher, and fan bases that are passionate about their teams? How about teams that are historic and stadiums that are iconic? Then you belong in Chicago, and you need to check out Chi Town Weekly. Join me, Adam Kernan, every week as we keep up with all things Chicago sports. Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox. We'll cover them all, plus more. The Windy City is always buzzing, and we'll keep you up on all the big games and major stories. So tune in to Chi Town Weekly every week right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports fans, this is Jen D, host of the Show of the Land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. If you love Cleveland and Columbus sports like I do, be sure to tune in live to the Show of the Land on Tuesdays, where we will cover the Cleveland Browns, Cavs, Guardians, and Monsters. We will also talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets, Crew, Fury, and of course, the Ohio State Buckeyes. We'll also cover other colleges in the area like Akron, Kent State, Cleveland State, Mount Union, John Carroll, Baldwin Wallace, Youngstown State, among others. 
So like I said, if you love Cleveland and Columbus sports like I do, be sure to tune in Tuesdays to the Show of the Land with Jen B on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. That's right, y'all. That's right. Gotta show love. And big ups to Gen B for that brand new drop. That was awesome, right? Gotta gotta show love or credit this dude. Great stuff. Great stuff. Brand new drop coming your way. And we got some more, by the way, coming up. <laughs> well, more, hopefully, by next week. But big ups to everybody. I had to go make myself some toast. Put some Nutella on it. Because it's delicious. Anyway. <laughs> With that said, we're going to jump on in to uh, do the next segment of our show. Let's continue on with week number nine. So, okay. The Vikings. Guys. Guys. So, okay. So, you're used to me, right? You're all used to me saying the Vikings. I've been watching them go downhill like a freaking snowball uh, for years, right? I mean, it's, they have been. It's just like, what, maybe year number seven or eight that they've been going downhill. And they, you know... Maybe not eight, maybe like six or seven, okay? They've been going downhill. And it's just, I don't, I don't see anything changing. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is their dude. I mean, it's, it's not like they're doing anything, but I guess they're just relevant. Maybe they're just satisfied with being relevant, but <clears throat> not super relevant, you know? So <laughs> I don't know if that's really the case uh, anymore, because they found a dude, well, they got a dude now, that looked pretty good, okay? And I don't know. I just, I just felt like this year, man, or this last past week, we saw some cool stuff. And there's a guy by the name of Joshua Dobbs, who, yeah, no, he's been around a little bit out of Tennessee. Everybody knows him. And, well, he played all right. He went 158 for two touchdowns. Or 158, two for 30, two touchdowns. He also led in rushing with 66 yards. He had seven carries, one TD. Guys, I, I think they need to keep him there. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, unfortunately, you know, uh, Cousins, I mean, you know, I don't want to kick him when he's down, you know, poor guy. Towards Keeley's, and I don't think he'll be back. But but as of right now, I don't know. I think this might be the guy moving forward. I, I mean, he needed a little bit of time. He's a little bit, you know. I mean, he's he's not old. He's twenty eight years old. I feel like this team is is in good position. They need to keep him moving. They need to keep this guy going. He's he's doing well, and you know what? Good for him. So good stuff for him. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, Gen V says, so weird hearing myself. Well, there you go. And of course, says, love Josh. So happy for him too. Yeah, he he's a great dude. He he's he's on his way. And I think he's he's gonna be he's gonna be just fine. I, I'm really excited for this. I really am. I, I think he's gonna be very, very good moving forward and um you know, good for him. So Okay. But I must say this. The Falcons, they don't know if they're coming or going. <laughs> <laughs> the the Falcons are the Falcons are that friend at a party <laughs> who's who's like trying to leave the party because they're just like kind of bored I guess of who they're hanging out with and they're trying to leave and then more people come and then they end up staying for a little bit longer, and they try and leave again, and then they meet people at the door, and they start talking to them, and they're there. What I'm saying is, is the party isn't good, right? The party, you know, nothing good is going on there. They're, I guess they showed up for a little bit, and maybe the wrong crowd is there. I don't know, but they just kind of keep sticking around for some weird reason. I don't know, but maybe that was a bad a bad uh, uh, analogy there. But, guys, I, I don't know, man. This team is so weird. Now they got freaking Heineke back there. You know, and he's been around for a while out of Old Dominion, if you guys remember him. I mean, he, he's he been around for a bit. I, I don't know. Riddick, I, they don't even know what they're going to do. They don't know. They, this team doesn't know one way or another. They don't know really anything. Um, it, It's just, ah, I don't know. It, 
this team has question marks everywhere. It's like it's like the Joker's bedroom, man. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> they, they just there's just nothing to. There's no certainty right now. There's not, and I feel like if there's anything going right for, I mean, they got a hell of a running back, but he he, he can't do everything by himself. Everyone's over here talking about oh, we need more. But John Robinson can only do as much as he can freaking do. His offensive line isn't that good, man. Like. I don't know. I mean, John U. Smith, he had a good game. I mean, he hit the sanctuary mark, 100 yards for five receptions, one touchdown. But, guys, it's just not there, man. It's not there. It's not there, Falcons. I don't know. It's not there. I They're 4-5 and five on the season. I don't know how much better they're really going to get uh, or if they're going to get better at all, really. They, they lost a close game. They played to the Vikings level. They just couldn't close it out. I mean, it, it just, I don't know, man. The Vikings scored in the last, like, what, couple seconds of the game or, like, in the last minute. So, I, I don't know. I, I just I just feel like right now the, the Falcons have so much going for them with, like, some of these youngsters they're bringing in. But at the same exact time, it's just, there's not enough going on. I, I, I don't know. I, it's weird. The Falcons are weird. Like, they're just this weird team that I... I want to try to get more in on them, but I can't. <laughs> it's just because we don't know. I could look like an idiot next week because they could blow somebody out. I don't know. But they just, they just look, I don't know. At the moment, at least, into this week, they don't look so well. Vikings win 31-28 on the road. Good for them. And there we go. The Packers over the Rams. Okay, can we all just say that Jordan Love isn't the guy? Can we stop talking about, oh, give him some time or whatever? Like, Guys, like, he played, you know, for them for a few years now. He was in for some some games. I remember hearing Adam Karnak talk about him in, the, in like, the COVID games and everything during that season where they had him in there and, and the Packers, like, weren't impressed and everything. I mean, let's just be real, guys. Jordan Love isn't the dude. He's not. I, I, I get it. I don't want to piss off Bernie in the chat room or whatever, but I, I don't know. I don't see it. Rogers, Rogers, you know, I mean, it took him a little bit to blossom too behind Favre or, you know, when he came out, but I don't know, maybe stick around. I don't know. But as of right now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now who did have a good game. I know who had a good game for the Packers. That was, that was Mr. Aaron Jones. <laughs> he looked good. He played well, but I just, I don't know, man. He just ah, it sucks because I want love to be good. I really do, but damn it, man! Like, and he threw for two hundred twenty-eight yards, and he went twenty for twenty-six. That's not even bad. It's not a bad average. It's not. But guys, he threw one touchdown. Like you gotta, you gotta have more out of your quarterback at this level. This isn't freaking high school where you can get by being the quarterback that all the girls love and that you know has the cool car and wears the Letterman's jacket. Like what's his name on none of the team movie? Um, <laughs> you know, Jake. You know, whatever. I mean, you know, like you can get by just handing the ball off and throwing a few balls looking cool. And this isn't that, man. This isn't that. You can't even do that in college because you'll lose your freaking starting position. Okay. And probably your scholarship. And you're damn sure I can't do that in the NFL because you're going to lose your job. Okay. He, he just, he's not doing enough. And, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't hate the guy. I think he, he's a cool person. I see his, inter- his interviews. He seems like a very nice man. But I just don't, I don't see it. I just don't see it. But look at in the chat room here. Yeah, Bernie, man. Bernie Bango says <laughs> MLF isn't the guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. I, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, this is love can be a solid game manager. That's his ceiling. Yeah. And Bernie also says here, Packers have to lean on the running game and love should only throw 25 yards. Yep, short little dink and dunks. That's it. Don't throw downfield, bro. Don't, don't just, just stay in your realm, do what you got to do, and try to work on your crafting it better as of right now, and maybe they'll keep you around if you start to improve. But as of right now, don't try to be what you're not because you're going to find yourself out of a job. It's just, this is how it goes, guys. It's the NFL, right? It's a business. So, Bernie says here, yeah, 20, 24 touches for Jones. Yeah, man. He had 
crazy, man. Uh, 73 yards on the ground and one touchdown. I mean, when it came down to it, though, I know it doesn't seem like it. I mean, 24 touches, it says here on the ESPN Sports Center app, it says that he had 20 carries for, for 73 yards and one touchdown. Regardless, um, it is what it is. If you had 24 or 20, what, what matters is, is that you had to watch this game to really see him work. You did. Because he picked up all the damn first downs, I think. <laughs> he... He's the one who carried the offense. He did. He did. And, and you know what? It, it's just, it's it's kind of sad because you'd expect so much more out of love. You really would. And 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 it's, you can't blame the Packers defense this week because well they did their part. They shut out the Rams. And okay, let let's let's say this. Okay, before anybody can say anything else, I know Stafford's hurt. He, he's he's. I don't know how long he's gonna take to come back. He's jacked up right now. I get it. I get it. But, ah, <laughs> the Rams have more problems than him, too, man. There's nothing there. I mean, I get it. You don't have a quarterback, but this defense couldn't, they, they couldn't stop anything this week, man. They look like a wet paper bag, man. They were just, the, <laughs> man, Aaron Jones was running all over these guys. And Cooper Cup, I get it. You know, we can't do much if the ball can't get thrown to him right. And, yeah, we can't hate on this kid. Uh, the guy that they have in there right now, uh, Ripian, you know, I mean, he's not necessarily a kid. I mean, he's been around for a little bit. But Brett Ripian, I mean, look, the Rams aren't terrible, okay? The Rams aren't terrible. But what also what the Rams aren't are that good either. They're 3-6. and six. We know a couple of years ago when they won the Super Bowl, they cashed out, <laughs> you know. They got good players. They do. But it's just not enough either. I think these guys are like where the Steelers are. They have, I mean, well, actually, the Steelers are a little bit better than these guys. But I don't know. There's just, there's just nothing to be excited about. I guess at the moment, you got your Super Bowl a couple years ago. Be happy. Let them keep on rebuilding somehow. I don't know. People are talking about McVay on the hot seat. People are saying that he's not. I don't know. But uh, yeah, Bernie says here when Jones gets 15 plus touches, Packers are like 36 and three or something crazy like that. Jones is the formula to win. Yeah, he 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 is the Packers, guys. He's the Packers. And then freaking the defense just goes crazy. The defense plays great football. I just hand the ball, man. Hand the ball. Jordan Love maybe mix in some old school. Maybe run the Veer. I don't know. <laughs> Run the option, man. <laughs> Call up uh, Georgia Tech and learn that triple option crap or the Navy or Army or whoever does that. I mean, come on, man. Like, just, he's got to throw the ball minimum, and they just got to use their legs. That's it. They should go old school Packers, man. Old school, old school Packers. I mean, I, that's it. Because as of right now, they, they, they're not really throwing the ball. I, I don't see this team winning by throwing the ball. That's, just, that's all there is to it. So, Good stuff there for the Packers. Um, they got a good victory, man. And you know what? That's good. They're they're moving in the right direction. They're three and five. It's it's a bad year for them for damn sure. But it could be worse. They could be like the Rams, who just simply don't have any direction at all at three and six. So, all right. Next up, the Commanders beat the Patriots because everyone's beating the Patriots. The freaking Raiders beat the Patriots this year. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this one. This then this one will be short and sweet. I promise. You know what? Good. They, they they could afford losing sweat. Cool. But what I don't understand right now with this Patriots, I'm sorry, with the Commanders, is they have a lot of things moving for them. They really do. The Commanders have a, a pretty solid core. They do. But it's irritating that they're four and five. I, I just, I just, ah, and I get it, the schedule. I get, I, I get a lot of things with this team. But what I don't get is, is this, man, like, <sighs> They got to turn it on, man. There's got to be that point in games where they're like, we have a damn good defensive line. Our linebackers aren't so bad. Our defense is actually pretty damn good. Our offense, eh, I mean, they could be better, but, you know, they have a dude back there. Sam Howell ain't horrible. He's not. He's People want to talk crap or whatever. He's not terrible. The guy can win, okay? The guy can win games. They got uh, Robinson, right? Brian Robinson back there. The guy's going to give you some productivity. They got some good receivers. The freaking commanders aren't a bad team. It just kind of blows my mind how, how, I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I will tell you this right now. Um, how, how I think this is the guy, you know, stick with him for a little bit. Uh, he, he looks, he looks all right. There, there's a lot that this team could do, I think, moving forward. But right now, it's just, 
it's just, let's can we get that defense a little bit better? Because let's just be real, that Patriots offense is mm, they're they're just everything about the Patriots is horrific. So the Commanders probably should have won this game by more. I don't know, but. Bernie says here, okay, I lied. Packers 32 for 8. 32 and 8 when Jones gets 15 plus touches. Dang. Still doesn't change the formula, no. But it's true. Think about that. That's, it doesn't matter. It's, it's still, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. And they need to give him the ball. Feed him, all right? So, anyway, yeah, the commanders just got it. They got a, you know, they got their guy. I think keep Hal back there. Whatever, whatever was this week, try it. Keep it going, you know? As for the Patriots, okay. Another guy that I don't want to, you know, Kicking the ding ding, okay. I don't. I hate that. It's it's kind. Of, I feel bad, but Mac Jones. I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he's really an NFL quarterback. I, I just. I just don't. I, I just. I don't. Ah, he's the guy. Just gives games away, man. He just. He just. He just throws the ball everywhere. He's careless. He's. Just, like I guess I've seen him before too. He's into a really nice guy, but I, I don't know, guys. I just. I just don't. You know, one of my. One of my. You know, um, my boys, man. Of course, I, man. It's funny. It's funny talking to Alex. For those of you who know Alex Gaines, been on the show many, many, many times uh, in the past, of course. But you know, my best friend, my boy, man, he he uh, he says it every day whenever we talk. You know, he just, he's irritated. He doesn't think Mac Jones is the guy. He's not the answer. He's he, he's not. Mac Jones is just not the dude. This team is just a they're a dumpster fire right now, and, and they're two and seven. I don't know if Bill's in the hot seat or not. I don't know what's going on. But what I do know is that. This Patriots team, just they're just not good, guys. They're not. They're, there's nothing there to be excited about right now. They look crappy. And they look like, I don't know, they look like crap. That's all there is to it. Now, granted, we all know, okay, and I, I guess this is where I'm going to get into the firing. Uh, we Ziggler, peaced out, you know, and uh, of course, McDaniels. Is McDaniels going to go back to New England? I think he should. And just stay there, dude. Stop. You know, look, we all heard the rumors this week about the, the meeting that they had where they all jumped all over McDaniels, the team did, and captains and everybody, and Antonio Pierce stood up for him. And then Antonio Pierce uh, got freaking, uh, somehow, some way, McDaniels was like, hey, don't talk about the Patriots like that when Pierce started talking about how they beat his undefeated, uh, all, you know, their undefeated team in 2008 in that Super Bowl. It's a big old thing, okay, guys. But, but what I gotta say is, is McDaniel's you, no, bro. You're you're not an NFL head coach. I'm sorry. So uh, gladly he's gone from my Raiders, and I think he's just go back, man. Go back. You, you're gonna you're gonna you're a hell of a coordinator. The guy the guy's a hell of an offensive coordinator. Good. Go back there, coach the Patriots, man. Coach with uh, with, with Belichick. Make money. Win games over there with them. But yeah, head coaching. I don't know. <laughs> But I will say this: as of right now, the Patriots just have. There's no hope. <laughs> They're bad. It's weird seeing them this like like this, but it, that's where they are. And and what do you do, right? What do you do? But Patriots fans, be happy. You had two decades, <laughs> right? So anyway, moving forward, Colts and the Panthers. What the crap? And I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. The Colts. Minshew, hey, the guy went 17 for 26, 127 yards, one touchdown. Yes, he played good. He played very good. Okay. The Colts, uh, they're weird because they don't really have, like, too much there. But Kenny Moore, this dude right here, he looks good. I like what he's got going. Okay. We look at we look at him. Uh, what he We look at Pittman. <laughs> the guy is playing. Taylor. I get it, he didn't have that great of a game, but there's pieces there. Colts fans, don't be sad, because there's a lot to look forward to with this team. Okay, Robinson, when he comes back, I, I guess there, there's a lot, guys, and I, and I really think that, be excited. Colts win this one, 27-13, to 13, and the Panthers just look bad. Bryce Young threw three picks. Uh, and you're, I'm going to get into the Panthers in just a little bit anyway when we talk about last night's game, but the Panthers just look bad. And I guess I, I wish they could be better. But the Colts win this one, 27-13. Next game, my Raiders win. They defeat the Giants. Yay! I guess I should be happy, right? Look, I'm excited. I want to see the Raiders win. I, I, I think Antonio Pierce is the guy. Can we not let him go like Basaccia? Okay? Can we not let him go like Tom Cable? <laughs> okay? 
I'm going back now, but look, we we need to keep these freaking some of these interims deserve it. Give them a real shot. I want to see it. The Raiders win 30 to 6 over the Giants after firing McDaniels. Okay, McDaniels, I spoke my piece about him. But you know what? This dude O'Connell, he didn't play so bad. Okay? 16 for 25, 209 yards. I'll take the victory where we can get it. Jacobs, the guy played out of his mind. Okay, two yards shy of the sanctuary mark. I think he did have the sanctuary mark somewhere in there. But he got a tackle for loss and it took him back underneath the sanctuary mark. Who cares? 98 yards, two touchdowns. We got the game, got the victory, looked good. This dude, Tucker, man, who is this guy? <laughs> Trey Tucker out of Cincinnati. I love it. The dude's playing good. He's coming out, getting some big pickups. Let's go. I'm happy. Raiders at four and five now. I mean, you know, we're not going to be no damn playoff team, but I'm happy that we're there. At least decent, right? As for the Giants, what the hell's wrong with you guys, man? I, I mean, I don't know, man. Daniel Jones is out now. Tough go for him. He he just, man, I, he, just, he just got jacked up in this game. I don't know when his timeline has come back. This guy, Tommy DeVito, comes in from Illinois. Uh, he just looked like he was deer in the headlights, thrown in there, didn't know what to do. Barkley played okay. He had 90 yards on 16 carries. Uh, but but what, what it comes down to is the Giants are still a dumpster fire. They don't know if they're coming or going either. This team needs a lot of help, and I hope somebody can help them. That's it. So, all right. Next up, we have the Eagles over the Cowboys. Wow. The Cowboys played decent. They played decent. You can't get mad. You can't get mad, Dak Prescott. Okay? The guy played his freaking heart out, man. He threw two. Uh, he threw three, uh, three TDs. 700 or 347. I said 700. <clears throat> 347 yards. Yeah, he went 29 for 44, but he's freaking trying, man. Pollard, bro, you got to get it going, man. You got 12 carries. Could have done more with that. Offensive line, I mean, don't get me wrong. The the Eagles' defensive line is nasty. And it, that, I love the clash of that defensive line, offensive line. C.D. Lamb played well, uh, th- 11 receptions for 191 yards. But I really feel like it was that run game. Stopping Pollard was huge. But... At the same time, bro, you're gonna face you're gonna face this defense twice a year, man. This offensive line has to freaking they have to rise the challenge and run blocking. They have to rise the challenge. Uh, Pollard has to do the same thing. And guess what? They didn't. They didn't, guys. They didn't. And where they didn't, the Eagles did. Hurts, seventeen for twenty three, two hundred seven yards, two touchdowns. Swift, man, he, he didn't run that great either. He only had forty three yards, man. Pollard had more than him on eighteen carries. Okay, Brown though they spread the ball around well. Brown seven receptions for six, uh, six six yards, one touch or uh, yeah, one touchdown. Guys, I, I, you, when, when are we gonna stop blaming Dak? <laughs> this defense could have done more. All right, people talk about oh the Eagles offense ain't that good, whatever. Well then, where was the freaking Cowboys defense? Where were they? Because I don't know where they were. I don't know what happened, but they weren't there. All right, this team didn't have it. They didn't have, look, it was a good game between two good teams and the better team won slightly. That's exactly what happened. Don't be throwing the old, let's get rid of Dak crap and all that. Look, it happens, you know. Um, But anyway, but there's a couple things to take a look at, man. Jalen Hurts is hurt now, you know. I don't know what's going on, but I know that he, I don't know. I mean, he's hes a tough dude, but gosh dang it, man. He, he's got an injury. So let's see. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't, hopefully he's cool. But kind of rough there, you know. And then we take a look at the Cowboys. And like I said, the Cowboys just, mm, I mean, it's just hard. It's hard for them right now to get anything going. Lamb is their guy right now, but they, they got to make more things happen on offense. And it's not Dak, man. I mean, maybe he should be running the, board, the ball more himself. But what I do know is that you can't, you can't always blame it on just one dude. And it was a good game, man. It was a good game. They lost. It was a good game. What more do you say, right? So, okay. Next up here, we have, and this was a crazy one, okay? This was, this was pretty crazy. We have here 
the Sunday night game, Bills, Bengals, we all know the DeMar Hamlin thing that happened, unfortunately. Uh, however, thank God he's okay. But what I do know is that the Bengals looked like a team. And they look like a team. And that's what I'm talking about. The Bengals have so much there. I know that I've been a little rough on them. (laughs) But what I will say is that, you know, we knew this team had a team. They just weren't playing like it. Well, now they are. Now they are. The Bengals are playing out of their freaking mind right now. Big up to our boy, Bernie Bengal. He says, great show. Got to head to a veterans meeting. Thank you, sir. Once again, as I said earlier in the beginning of the show, man, thank you for your service, bro. Got to thank all of our servicemen. For those of you who don't know, Bernie Bengal served in our U.S. military. So thank you, good sir. Thank you so much. I salute you. Thank you for your service. And enjoy your Veterans Day, brother. You definitely earned it. Uh, but yeah, big ups to all our veterans as always. And uh, thank you for tuning in a little bit today, Bernie. Appreciate you, man. So with that said, guys, the Bengals have now won like how many? One, two, three, four, five, four, four straight now. The Bengals, Burrow's gaining, he's regaining his footing. 31 for 44. He had 348 yards, man. Two touchdowns. Mixon didn't have the greatest game, but he still got a freaking touchdown. Okay, they played, they just outplayed the Bills, man. That's all there is to it. The Bills have so many injuries right now, and it's really harming them, and I get that. But you got to still play the games, right? <laughs> you got to go out there. You got you to fill the team and play. And damn, they played. The Bills, for having a banged up team, they, they just going to show you that they are a true Super Bowl caliber team. You know, they really are. But unfortunately, with these injuries, I don't really know if that's the case anymore. I still think they can go, but it just ah, seems unrealistic now. But damn, they're still good. They played as hard as they could in this game. Couldn't close it out. And what I got to say for this is very simple. Can those Bills, can they, can they regroup? Can they rally the troops? And can they somehow, some way, overcome these injuries? It's a tall order, guys. It's a tall order. That's a tall order and a tough task. It's a mother. That is a hard thing to ask somebody. Hey, can you um like stop being hurt and get back on the field? No, you don't ask that because that's how you get worse. But you can say, hey, guys, who now have a shot? Can you freaking act like you want it? <laughs> you know, talent is talent. But I'll tell you right now, you know that old, you know that old saying, y'all. Hard work always beats talent when talent is not working hard. And it's the truth. With all these guys, they can just work their ass off and they can get in and make it happen. So let's see it. So Bengals on Sunday Night Football defeat the Bills 24 to 18. Bengals now jump to 5 and 3 on the season as the Bills drop to 5 and 4. Good game. On Monday night, the Chargers went ahead and absolutely demolished the Jets. Okay. Herbert is Herbert. Okay, I don't know anybody who wrote him off, but but dude, like, yeah, 16 for 30, 136 yards, didn't throw any touchdowns, who cares, he got in, right? They got TDs. <laughs> Eckler, this dude right here got down, man. 14 carries, 47 yards, but he got two, two, two TDs. Well, sometimes the, the yardage don't even matter. This dude right here, man, he did it. He, he, he helped carry his team, man. He's a hard worker. I really respect that guy. And he's short, which is great. You know, he's right around my height. I love it. I'm happy. So what I will tell you is that sometimes, okay, sometimes it just takes a team who has tons of heart. I'm not saying that the Chargers don't have great players because they do, but damn it, they got heart and they're hard to beat. They're hard to beat when they're, when they're on one. I get it. They're four and four. They've had some injury problems too, but you know what? The Jets have a good football team, and guess what? The freaking Jets got down. I mean, the Jets, sorry, they fell apart, and the Chargers got down. And that's what it's all about right now. Some people are back and forth with Wilson right now, Zach Wilson. Oh, what is he good? Is he bad? What is he? You know, do we like him? Do we not? Aaron Roggs is over here talking about he can be back for the playoffs, but you got to get to the playoffs first, man. <laughs> I've heard the commentator say that. And it's like, it's true, man. So let's see what happens. But uh, as of right now, the Chargers, they look charged up, man. You know, no pun intended. <laughs> but... 
these guys look good. They look like a good football team. They look like they're like they're on their way to to maybe having a better season than they than they were gonna originally have because they're stepping up. Let's see what they do this year. And in the second half, that is. And as for the Jets, the ball's in their court, man. The, the ball's in their court. They 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 can either step it up and play like how they did the night that Rogers went down, or they can just be mediocre. And that's it. Call it a season. And uh, hope and pray that Rogers is all one hundred percent healthy to play next year. And oh, hey, hopefully everything works out. You know, you know what I mean. Like that's it. That's really everything. That's it. That's that's it. There's no more. <laughs> you know. So let's see. Let's see what happens, and let's see how it goes. So, all right, guys. Well, there you have it. There is all of Week Nine. Man, crazy to see. It's crazy. It's so weird now calling Week Nine the halfway point because it's usually it's Week Eight. You know. So we're gonna take ourselves one more break. When we get back, you're gonna get my quick picks. For week number 10, and of course, my quick recap of Thursday Night Football from last night. Crazy one. So, you're listening to 3 and Out right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Right here with me, your boy Larry B. When we come back, we are getting some picks in for, for week number 10. And boy, was last night's game the toilet bowl. <laughs> I will see you on this side of this break, y'all. We'll be right back after this. Hockey fans, I'm Adam Kernick. And I'm Zach Puplis. Together, we are the newest version of Hockey Talk on IE Sports Radio, The Neutral Zone. Zone, 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 zone. We love hockey, but we also know it's not everyone's first sport. So we want to make this show as much for new fans as for the diehards. Whether you can name all the Swedes on the 08 Red Wing Stanley Cup team, or if you can't tell if Varlamov is a goalie or the latest trendy vodka, we're here to help. With facts, figures, and outrageous fans, we bring you all the hard-hitting hockey news you can handle, while still keeping it fun and on the rails. Well, mostly. So tune in every week as we go around the hockey world, from college to Canada, the minors and the majors, and everywhere in between. So bring your sellies. And your one-timers. Your wicked ristas. And be sure to protect your five-hole. Catch the Neutral Zone every week on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We promise not to pick on the Arizona Coyotes every episode. It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy white tea. <laughs> We are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Man, we got so many great shows here on the network. Check them all out. Great stuff every week. Tons and tons and tons of shows, y'all. Trust me. If you love sports, I mean, you don't need to look any further than IE Sports Radio. I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> but you got to know, man. We got what you need. Just like Marcus Lowe's great, y'all. We got what you want. We got what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> all right y'all so check out marcus by the way bi-weekly every sunday great dude man and uh well every, bi- bi-weekly <laughs> i said bi-weekly every sunday <laughs> catch of course our boy marcus loves great sundays 
bi-weekly covering all combat sports. Great dude. So, all right, guys, and of course, all the other great shows. Here's Neutral Zone with Adam Karnick and Zach Pupilis. Great stuff there. Some Okay, quick picks for this week. Well, real quick recap of last night's game. Thursday Night Football starting off week 10. Okay, let's just put it like this. The Bears won a good game, right? Kind of. <laughs> that was a toilet bowl if I've ever seen one. Let's just call it what it is. The, the at the time, 1-7 Panthers and the 2-7 Bears, it was going to be a... <clears throat> One of those games to start off with, but I love football, so I'm going to watch anyway, and I did. Uh, I'm glad I did. It was a pretty good game between two lower teams that, it was two JV teams, guys. That's what it was. It was two JV teams that had a good game. That's exactly what it was. And you know what? Cool. Good for Beijing. You know, he he looked all nice and confident after uh, after winning that game <laughs> when they had him on last night. Good for him. I'm happy. He played well. Cool seeing his pops, you know, the arm wrestling champion. I think I don't know if he's a national or world champion. Pretty cool there, uh, seeing him do that. But, but what I will do is, is say that he played, he played good. And you know what? It was good enough to win. Good enough to get that victory. And that's what they want. They're three and seven now. Cool. The Panthers just look bad. I, oh my gosh. I, it sucks, man. I want to see Bryce Young do so good, but gosh. Damn it, they just look so bad. And it's not just him, man. That whole offense, like I told you earlier, the entire offense for the Cardinals, man, they look like, well, the entire team of the Cardinals looked like they had somewhere else to be. Like they were playing this game, but it was just a pickup game with friends and they had to get home because they had something more important to do. That's what the freaking Panthers look like. Like they just didn't want to be there, man. Like there's nothing, nothing exciting right now. They're not getting anything going on offense. Their defense is hanging on by a thread and that thread broke as of, as it's been this last past well last past season <laughs> okay it's just there's nothing there guys there's nothing there and for the for the bears nothing there either <laughs> they just played to get a team that was worse than them that's what happened but it's what it's like the raiders guys when they beat the raiders the bears won that game but it's the raiders so what have you really won the only way that last night's game could have got worse is if the raiders would have made a cameo appearance you would have seen raiders in there randomly uh playing on both sides of the ball, and you would have seen them freaking cueing the circus music and dropping balls and and missing tackles and you know I mean just I don't know. Last night was a Raider game with two teams that are trying to mimic the Raiders. That's the only way to put it. <laughs> Last night was the Cardinals and Raiders playing as other teams. I mean I, I don't know what else to say, but that's exactly what it was. So anyway, so week ten started. We have here the, uh, this was a crazy one, okay? 16 to 13. Bears win this thing. They're now 3 and 7 on the season, and the uh, Panthers are now 1 and 8. Okay, quick picks for this week. Let's go ahead and get it going, guys. We have here, uh, coming up, early game, NFL Frankfurt games, all right? So in Germany, Colts at 4 and 5, and the Patriots at 2 and 7. Okay, let's just go ahead and, and call this what it is. It's not going to be the greatest game, even though it's supposed to be a quote-unquote rivalry game, right? Um, <laughs> but both these teams have kind of lost their spark. Regardless, the Colts are favored by 2.5 points, and, and, and you know what? I, I just... With the Patriots playing how they are right now, I think that the the the, the Colts are definitely going to win this game by that or more. So yes, I'm going with the Colts in this one. Okay, next up here we have the Texans and the Bengals. Texans at four and four, Bengals at five and three. Uh, you know, I would love to say that the CJ Stroud thing is going to continue to work really great for them, and it is. It is. It's going to go great for these guys. However, it's not this week because uh, the Bengals are on one. They won four straight. They're going to win five straight, and they look good. All right, they're favored by six and a half. I think they're going to win this game. Okay, next up, Packers and the Steelers. Packers come in at three and five. Steelers at five and three. Pittsburgh is favored by three and a half points. You know, it's kind of hard because the Packers are relying on that run. The Steelers actually have a decent defense. I think they can minimize that run. And realistically, at that point in time, the Packers can't do much. I'm taking the Steelers here by by three and a half points or more for sure. I think they'll cover. And that's just the way it'll be. That's just the way I think it is. All right. So next up, Titans at uh, Buccaneers. Titans at three and five. Buccaneers at three and five. Both these teams suck. I mean, let's just call it what it is, right? Uh, but the Buccaneers are favored by one point. And you know what? I think that'd be kind of funny if that's exactly what it was. Give me the Bucks because they're home. And because I feel that the Buccaneers might turn it on just a little bit this week. They're going to go back down next week, but this is a, a, a winnable game, and I think they're going to win it. Browns at 5-3, and three, Ravens at 7-2. and two. Gen B, if you're, still, if you're still listening, don't hate me. Uh, Mike Pat, you know, I guess he'll be happy about this. I don't know. It's just a pick. That's all it is. But 
I feel the Ravens are just on one right now. I feel the Ravens are just just getting it done. The, it's going to be one hell of a game. It's going to be fun. It's going to be close. But I'm going to take the Ravens by a field goal. They said the Ravens by six and a half. I think it's going to be closer to that, than that. Um, but yeah, I'm taking the Ravens in a close one here. I don't, th- I don't think the, the uh, Ravens will cover this whole thing with the spread. But I think the yeah the Ravens will win this. So okay, next up the Niners. The San Francisco 49ers at five and three, and the Jacksonville Jaguars at six and two. We have here the they have the Niners winning by three. Um, yeah, I don't really know how this game will go any other way. The Niners are on one. They guess they're coming off a bye. They're looking okay. As for the Jaguars, they're I think they're also coming off a bye too, right? Um, I, I guess I feel like the the, the, the not, sorry sorry Jen in the chat room says boo go Brown. I'm sorry I'm sorry Jen, but but yeah um, the the Niners just I, I'm pretty sure they're going to win this game. I mean, is there anything else to say there? It's still their favorite by three. I think they're going to win by more than that. Um, the Saints here, Saints at five and four. The Vikings at five and four. Yeah, the Vikings. L- let Joshua Dobbs continue to do his thing, man. This dude is on one. Let him take this team, man. Let him take this team and do what he's got to do. <sighs> it sucks because I would like to see the Saints win for, for Carr, but but I'm going Vikings. They got them. They got the Saints by three points. I'm taking the Vikings by three points. Okay. Next up, the Cardinal. I'm sorry, the Falcons and the Cardinals. Oh my gosh, that's another toilet bowl. Four and five Falcons, one and eight Cardinals. And isn't it funny that I say this is a toilet bowl, even though one team has three more three more wins than the other team? It's because the Falcons don't know what they're doing right now. They're favored by two points. I'm gonna take them by a field goal, but my goodness. There's a chance that the Cardinals will actually win this game. <laughs> they're at home. The Falcons don't know what they're doing. Uh, yeah. So, okay. The Lions at six and two and the Chargers at four and four. Lions at three points. Are they favored by three points here? I, this is going to be a good game. It really is. And I, I don't want to say, cause look at the Raiders, man. When they, when they play the Raiders, the Lions did their best to give that game away. I feel like the Chargers will probably end up winning this thing, but I'm going to go with the Lions. Just because I feel like they're going to have, I guess, a little bit more than them. But don't be surprised if the Chargers win this game. Next up, we have here the Giants and the Seahawks. The, the Seahawks. Oh, sorry. The Seahawks. Sorry. The Giants and the Cowboys. Oh, that's a fun one, right? Giants at 2-7. and seven, The Cowboys at 5-3. and three. The, the Cowboys are favored by 17 points. I think they went by more than that. I feel bad for the Giants. I hope... Um, I hope Danny Jones is okay. I hope he gets healthy soon. But, yeah. The Cowboys win this one big. Then, of course... We have my, uh, well, not yet, not yet, not yet. We have the Commanders and the Seahawks. Commanders at four and five, Seahawks at five and three. They have the Seahawks favorite here by six. I feel like it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to come down to, it might, we have, might have overtime for this game. I'm going to go, uh, the Seahawks winning this game by three because they're home. They're embarrassed from last week. They actually have more things going for them, I think, than the Commanders right now, ever so slightly. It's going to be a good game, but I'm taking the Seahawks. And then, of course, we have the Jets and the Raiders. Of course, i got to pick the Raiders. That's my team. Uh, that's our rule in our Pick'em League, too. you got to pick your team. But, uh, yeah, Jets, they just look blah. The Raiders, they, they're a little rejuvenated, but they're still blah. They have them in the ESPN scores. They're not favored by one point. Thank you, <laughs> I guess. I'm taking the Raiders probably by that. I'm going to say by a field goal, but we'll see. And then Monday Night Football, of course. So that was Sunday Night Football. Monday Night Football, Broncos and Bills. This is sad. <laughs> Broncos at 3-5, and five, Bills at 5-4. and four. What do you do? You know, the Broncos might come out and surprise everybody and beat the the Bills or the Chiefs. I honestly think the Bills, the Broncos can do that. They're capable of doing it. But I'm going to take the safe pick here, and I'm going to go Bills winning this one. They have them by seven. I think they'll win this game by seven, and they'll cover. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Cue that music, because we're out of here. Damn. All right, you guys. There we go. Man, that was a fun one. I know, it's supposed to be an hour show, but, well, you know me. I can't even do it by myself. <laughs> I can't even do a hour show by myself when it comes to football, guys. I just talk so much football. I love football. And what do we do? You know? So, anyway, guys, that is that. That is that for this week. Man, that was a fun one. Thank you guys all so very much for joining in the chat. Jen B, Bernie Bango, Angela Winstead, and Taryn Rodriguez. Thank you guys all so very much for tuning in, joining. You guys were awesome. And, uh, Definitely looking forward to more of these. Next week, we should be back on StreamYard. But thank you for tuning in. That was a lot of fun. Make sure to check out our sponsor, as always, Planet Jerky. Delicious, 
premium brisket beef jerky. A jerky that's on a whole other planet. Planet jerky and ice sports radio go hand in hand. And of course, sports. Grab you some jerky, listen to ice sports radio, watch some sports. You won't regret it. Also, big ups all of everybody. As always, say big ups uh, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Without Him, nothing is possible. That's right. And of course, big ups to all you guys out there. Because without you guys, Ice Sports Radio is not possible. We thank you all so very much. Thank you all for being a part of this. Head on over to Ice Sports Radio. Check out all the stuff we got going on over there. The new ticker on the top of our main page. All the latest and sports going on. The schedule right down below. Click on it. You see all the pages there for those shows. Um, got to edit today's, of course. Got to you know, edit that and make it look good for today. <laughs> Check out all of our website pages for all of our shows, dedicated to all of our shows on there. We have our forum, the Ice Sports Radio Community Forum. J- jump on there. Talk about what's on your mind in sports. We'll talk about it. Uh, check out our blog, of course, our shop that's on there. Grab you some shirts, uh, all kinds of great stuff on there, hats and everything. We just appreciate you all once again. Check us out on iTunes. We are everywhere, Spotify, all kinds of places you can find your podcast, Spreaker.com, of course. We thank you for that. Check out our social media at iSports Radio on X, iSports Radio on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. Check out all of our snippets, hashtag IESR snippets. Leave a IESR fandom, hashtag IESR fandom. We'll retweet you on our page. I'll get better at that, but Thank you all so very much, y'all, for making the station what it is. We appreciate you all so very much. Catch my beautiful wife and I, my beautiful wife Cecilia and I, coming up later on today for the Sports Cup Perspectives. We've got a good show coming up for you tonight and another good coffee. So we appreciate you all so very much. We thank you all. And, well, let's get on to week number 10 of the NFL. That's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you all so very much. For me, your boy Larry B., I am signing off. We'll see y'all next week. Until then, take care. And as always, God bless.